Now we are at the first stop that is Sunshine Old Street. Old Street means a street with a fluent historical background. In the past, this place was a prosperous area. People once said that you can buy everything on the street. However, gradually, this place became bleaker and bleaker. Luckily, through the rising stream of tourism, Samsha revised, becoming prosperous again. Looking into the Sanjiao Yon Street, you will see that the facade even in Sanjiao Yon Street. But why is it that we use Sanjiao Yon Street instead of Sanxia Old Street? Actually, the reason is that Sanjiao Yon is the original name of Sanjia. San means three, and there are three rivers passing through here, and then covering the lighter shade of triangle. Yon means turbulent wave as a metaphor to describe the great deal of immigrants immigrated from mainland China to here. We uh, also use a homophone with another Chinese word, Yong, to describe how brave Taiwanese were when they were confronted by Japanese army in 1894. Later on, unfortunately, Taiwanese was defeated by Japanese army, so uh, they became the colony of Dian and under control by Dian. So Japanese transferred, uh, changed the name of San Yong into Sanxia and pronounced San Kakuyang into San Kyo. Sanxia Old Street is located at the southern section of Mingchen Street. Some people also call it Mingchen Old Street. And it, is, it has the honor of one of the longest streets in South Northern Taiwan. Do you know how long is it? About 100 meters? No, no, no. It's about 260 meters. After it's it's like a Chinese word so that people cannot see through the whole street just from one side. I've heard that the achievements of Sanxia Old Street are famous. Can you give us a brief introduction? Of course. When it comes to Sunshine Old Street, it is necessary to mention its architecture style. Come with me, let's take a look at it. The outer walls of the houses were built with drapery, and the inner walls were made of clear. Uh, the architecture of Sunshine Old Street actually blends with three different elements. For example, uh, Baroque, Japanese, Taiwanese style. The first one I would like to introduce for you is Ding A Ka, a traditional Taiwan architecture. It is built under the eaves so people won't get away in a rainy day. Uh, it not only offers a place for tourists to take a rest and become a hallway and a special artwork. The Dota Ward is a smaller ward which is known for its unique styling featuring solid, hollow, and friend styles of decoration. Additionally, set upper to the roof. Look at this one. It was designed with Baroque style, which is full of gorgeous and exaggerated geometrical patterns. As for this one, there are some dots walls with traditional Chinese patterns such as animal motifs or the blessing words from homophone. For example, the vase curve on the first half is a homophone, which means peace and blessing. Every store with its special name and decorations on the facade can quickly show customers what kinds of product they sell 
and who the owner is. For example, take a look at this one. The signboard written in Chia He Oyo Store. So we will know that this store may be sell oil. In addition to the special architecture style, is there any other special? Yes, the installation art is another specialty of Sunshine Oyo. Take a look at it. For example, the ditches covered with different patterns of decoration were designed by Master Li Mei Shu. Some of them are his famous paintings. The others are his new creations. I've heard of this person, but I'm curious what he wants to design for the ditch cover. Because at that time, he served as the Prime Minister of Farmers Association. So, in order to promote the, sun, the local industry of Sansha, he make a use of ditches to make an ad. When it comes to Sansha's local industries, I think I need to shortly introduce the odd and new industry for you. In the past, there were three famous industries called odd treasures, which is camphor, material of indigo dyeing and leaves. However, time flies, there are another three industries called new treasures, which is bamboo shoots, leaves, and kazon. Looking through the all three almost 80%, I feel a little bit exhausted. Can we take a break? Of course! Hey, what a coincidence! There's a chair you can rest on and take a short break. The shape of this chair is a little bit open and different from the normal one. Are you sure that I can sit on it? Of course you can. But actually, you know, the place you sit on isn't a tablet originally. Isn't a tablet? Then what is it? It's a secret. If you want to know the answer, just follow me and you will find the answer by yourself. Let's move on to our next adventure immediately. Hi, I'm the other host, Teresa. Now we are standing in a narrow alley and searching for the secret of that stone. I've heard that the secret is just inside, so let's go. Today we invite the teacher to explain why Sansha relates to indigo dyeing. Welcome teacher. Hello. Hi. Hi teacher. We are happy go. Oh, I know you. You are very famous, right? Oh, thank you. Oh, teacher, could you tell us why indigo dyeing is said to have something to do with Sansha? Oh, for the indigo dyeing, there are three essential elements. That is water, material and transportation. In the past, there were three rivers around Sansha, dyes in the mountains, and the roadways uh, to transport. So you can see many dye houses along the Sansha Elm Street. Oh, thank you. Oh, teacher, do you know why, what are the, what are the trees along the Elm Street is for? You mean the Close pressing stone? Mm, yep, yeah, it's just a strange ship. Oh, it's a kind of instrument called close pressing stone. And its original function is just like a big iron that praising uh, the fabrics and doing the process of indigo dyeing. So, uh, through the process of pressing, the fabric will become more lustrous and tan, so the, uh, it's Pride and value of rice. However, later on, it also becomes a decoration uh, to in, on the Austria. It also offers a place for tourists and to rest on. Oh, I know the indigo dime better. Thank you, teacher. Okay. And today, I bring my own work. Really? Yeah. It looks very nice. Yeah, this is my own t-shirt. Yeah, and this is my book. And the cover is indigo dyeing. Isn't it good? Yes. I think everyone 
once you have one, so let's do our own indigo dyeing. Choose a name material, a book, a scarf, a handkerchief, or even a treasure bag. Create your own style by using rubber bands, beads, and clips. Put your wort in the clean water first, and then the indigo. Repeat this step for three times. Unfold it and bask it in the sun. Now we finish it. I believe it is a memorable and a wonderful souvenir for you to visit Sansha. And I think our trip should keep going. The Sansha Zushi Temple was built in 1759 and went through three reconstructions. The third time, in 1947, the reconstruction of the temple was hosted by Li Men Shu. Because of him, the temple is not only a religious center, but an art museum, and the temple won the title, The Palace of Eastern Art. Beside me, these are the Gatos copies. Do you notice one fascinating thing? See the first wall of these copies. They are This lion is adorable. Yeah, the lion was designed by Li Mei Shu, and there was an interesting story about it. The sculptor submitted his draft of the lion to Li, but Li rejected them again and again. Then the sculptor was angry and became disobedient to Li. The sculptor and the other architects found that Li was only an artist who knew nothing about the architecture, so they refused to obey him. However, Li designed the lion by himself and accomplished parts of the stone lion. At last, architects respected Li because of Li's effort and his brilliant design. I do like his curly hair. I bet that you are more interesting in this temple now. So let's go inside and check it out. and the stone walls below, and also the bronze walls like these doors. The deity of this temple was Zhu Shi Master. It was from mainland China. There are three major Zhu Shi temples in Taiwan, one in Mengjia, one in Danxi, and one in Sanxia. There are miraculous stories about him, like Zhu Shi Master in Mengjia. It is said that its black face would be black when it meant the evil. Also, uh, the Zhu Shi Master in Danxi is said that its dropping nose would drop to notify its people that the troubles are coming. As for the Sanxia Zhu Shi Temple, it is famous for its magnificent architecture. Sanxia Zhu Shi Temple is just like a museum. Everything you see in the temple is just a work of art. Now, please look at this. These pillars are called birds and home pillars. There are 100 birds on these two pillars. Each pillar perched by 50 birds with 18 posters. These 100 birds are 100 different kinds of birds. You could bring your book to check if I am right or not. Now, I am going to show you more walls in this temple. The Song, the center of the temple's roof, which is usually crowned with symbols, staircase to heaven, the trap to capture the evil, and the song.
fishes, crabs, and shrimps can be found in the temple. There are stone carvings on the pillars. Bronze sculptures can be found at the entrance. The four gates represent four heavenly kings, wind, harmony, rain, and affluence. In Taiwan, Sanfa Zhu Temple possesses the most pillars of all. There are 165 pillars, and on January 6th of the Lunar Calendar, the temple will hold the pink competition. Every year, the event attracts lots of tourists and tourists to come. The temple is full of stories. Never be so hasty when you are in Sanfa Zhu Temple. Slow down and indulge yourself in those enchanting works of art. Who is the great person who accompanies bandit works? So now let's find the answer. At Zhonghua Road stands the Li Meishu Memorial Gallery. Here, through the exhibition for Li Meishu's paintings and personal belongings, people can understand him much better. Besides, it is interesting that almost all the figures drawn in Li Meishu's paintings will appear on the scene and will serve as the guiders, offering introductory service for tourists. Sansha is a place which is filled with elements of culture, especially on the aspect of art. And such this big cultural heritage actually was accomplished by many people's devotion. And Li Mei Shu is one of the important contributors. But do you know who Li Mei Shu is? Come with me and I will tell you who he was. Hello everyone. Today, my introduction will divide into two parts. The first one is the brief introduction to Li Mei Shu. The second one will be the appreciation of his paintings. Li Mei Shu was born in 1902 and died in 1983. He put all of his heart in art creations and public affairs. In the aspect of art creation, he entered the uh, Japanese language school in Taiwan and received the former art education when he was 16 years old. Later on, before he went for the study in Japan, he served as the uh, teacher at his hometown. Please look at this. This is the license of a teacher. It can prove that Lee once served as the teacher at his hometown. Hey, what is that? What? Oh, this one is the lineal drawing. This is very interesting because uh, there there are four Chinese words uh, drawn by Li Mei Shu when he was 18 years old with 32 birds, which means that uh, great ambition. Hey, what about a naked girl? Oh, such kind of paintings you mentioned were drawn by Li when he studied at the Department of Western Painting at Tokyo University of the Art. All the students in this department were required to draw lion drawings like that. And human figures, learning to deal with the line, light, and shadow and to portray real authenticity of human body and muscle. 
Okay, now let's move on to the second part, the appreciation of these paintings. The first one I would like to introduce is this one, called Beloved Grandson. This is an interesting painting because Master Li used a poem with Chinese words. As the title of this painting, Beloved Grandson, Master Li show his great love for his grandchildren. On the other hand, he also show his great love for our country's father, Dr. Sun Yat-sen, because they were presented with the same Chinese words, Sun, as grandson, as the last name of our country's father. And a great arrangement of uh, the three grandsons uh, were presented a form by another Chinese word, Shan. In addition, the calendar appearing in the paintings is the exact dead birth of our country's father. As for the drawing style, Li used his very special drawing style so that the eyes of the figures, the age of the text, and the toys will look at you directly no matter what position you stand.